Hello everybody. Today I am sharing with you the ho story of my 22 year old self where I dated two professional golfers at once that were both British, that both played in the PGA, who both lived in my hometown, that caught me because <laughs> they were friends. I'm just trying to tell this story from an entertainment value. I am not trying to actively defend myself throughout. Without further ado, let's launch into this. I had just became single after a six year on and off relationship in 2016. The first thing I decided to do was to join Bumble because for whatever reason, Bumble seems to have a way of making girls feel like they are more in control and they're probably not gonna get a dick pic which we all know is a lie because the same people that use Bumble use Tinder. I had matched with this guy who had these really cool like pictures, you know, swinging the club in the field and he was cute, you know, a little like, he wasn't conventionally good looking, but to me, I like that. So I was like, yeah, he seems nice. And that was literally my first message to him was, you seem nice. <laughs> he was like, I am. And we messaged each other back and forth for literally two months. Mind you, this whole time I'm like maybe meeting a bumble boy here and there. I'm trying to like expose myself to dating. He was traveling around everywhere and stuff and he wasn't really sitting down in one place. Somewhere in between this two month time span, I ended up joining Tinder. Probably the first week of January, I ended up matching with another golfer. He had professional pictures too. However, he didn't say that he played in the PGA. Whereas the first guy who I matched with from Bumble, who we will call Tiger, Tiger was leading with that straight up. Like he was not afraid to include that in his game as his attraction, I guess. Like he was very much like aware that it did make him seem like somebody who had his shit together, which no big deal if you got it, flaunt it. Guy number two, we shall call Lester. Lester decides to meet with me within the first week of texting. I'm just gonna say this. Lester is good looking, like conventionally good looking. 6'2", brown hair, blue eyes, you know, the look, okay? That's, I don't gotta say it. I go on this date with Lester and knowing that he was a golfer in general, I was like, I am probably not going to get along with this guy at all. I do not play sports. I do not like sports. I don't care about golf. Whoever plays golf must have like a dry, boring, unsalted personality. But then I met Lester and he was so like, and my personality is like, so we had so much fun together that by the end of our first date, Lester goes, All right, you know what? I want to take you off Tinder. I want to be the one that takes you off the date in profiles. Go on now, delete your Bumble, delete your Tinder. And I was like, I'll do it if you do it. And he goes, Okay. So I delete my Tinder and so does he. But then I thought to myself, I don't want to be easily won over. So I tell him, I will delete my Tinder, but I will not delete my Bumble account. And he was kind of like, Ugh. That's how the first date ended. So he was very clearly into me. And from there on out, he kind of started calling me and texting and wanting to see me again. But I had planned my first meetup with Tiger. And because Tiger was somebody who wasn't conventionally good looking, I thought that, you know, since Lester has such a good personality, Tiger probably is even better. And he's probably gonna be super sweet and nice, especially since we've been sending each other novels and being pen pals. So me and Tiger, we finally decided to meet up one day cause he just happened to be in my area. So we go downtown. And when we're downtown, he didn't really have a plan. We just had a bar that we wanted to meet at. And when we're at this bar, he's already flirting with the bartender. And we were gonna order food there, but then we missed the window for that because the kitchen was closed. So we decide, okay, let's just walk around and find somewhere else to eat. Downtown Orlando is the biggest, smallest area, and I had a Android at the time with a wacky GPS system. So I was getting us lost, and we didn't have a plan. 
and he was not about making the plan. He was putting it all on me. So Tiger ends up being a lazy tiger. And then we go to this one place where there's a line of staff all, um, you know how Chipotle is set up with the people set, you know, making the food in the line. Yeah. Well, we walk into this place and they go, hello, how are you? Do you guys know what you want? And Tiger goes, no, and my date doesn't know anything because she can't fucking make up her mind or decide where to go. And they all looked at me like, do you need help? Because I was like, oh, I can't believe he just said that. And at this point in my dating career, I was the kind of girl that was like, okay, okay, just stick it out, stick it out. It'll get better. Just have a drink, eat the food. And while we're eating our food, he's taking like five minute breaks in the bathroom and he's not really talking. So it was not going good. But somehow, some way, we ended up back in the bar that we started at. We get drunk, we make out. This make out apparently is so good to him that he's like, hey, you come back to mine, come back to my place, no funny business. I just want to have breakfast with you. We'll just have a cuddle. So little side note here, Tiger's mom was visiting from London at his residency and Tiger also lived 45 minutes away, whereas I was 10 minutes from the area. The one week your mom is there, you're gonna be sneaking girls inside? No, absolutely not. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And he was all about, you know, getting my Uber home the next day, driving me back, whatever, but that wasn't gonna happen for this one. <laughs> That's how it ended with that. And I pretty much knew between the two of them that I liked Lester more. So me and Lester end up going on another date and I'm gonna be honest y'all, things got physical, physical, but not all the way because I'm a lady. And with Lester, he um, was still calling me, hitting me up all the time, but so was Tiger. And with Tiger, I was kind of not picking up his calls and I was avoiding him and being a slow texter. But sign number one that these two probably knew each other, they both told me that they were both going to the Bahamas. Lester told me that it was for work. Tiger was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go play a tournament out there. So I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> That's cool, like, you know, for both of them. And when they're out in the Bahamas, they are there for like a good week. And this whole week, me and Lester are FaceTiming and we're Snapchatting and we're sending text messages every day. And Tiger is asking me to FaceTime and I'm coming up with excuses. And he's texting me and I'm taking hours, kind of blowing him off. He's even asking me, oh, hey, let's hang out when I come back. And I was like, sorry, I'm actually getting sick right now. I don't think that's a good idea. And eventually Tiger's like, Look, if you don't like me, just say it. You don't have to do this. You don't got to be like that. What was going on in between all of these interactions was them telling me about their days. Lester would tell me that he went snorkeling and so would Tiger. And that's when I'm like, oh my God, these two probably know each other. Also, another little tidbit before they both left, Lester added me on Facebook. Well, um, <laughs> Tiger added me on Facebook too while he was in the Bahamas. We were both mutuals. And this was back in a time where it didn't show who was your mutual, like up front and center. It was kind of one of those things where you had to look into it a little bit. I'm at this point with them where they've been in the Bahamas for seven days. The last day is coming up. Meanwhile, this entire time, I've been blowing off Tiger, tossing him to the side, not really responding to text messages, while I am writing the D of Lester back to the future fast. I'm not making any secrets about it. That moment comes. It's the very last day that they're at the Bahamas. I'm just doing my homework, and suddenly Lester gives me this random incoming FaceTime call. But you know as a girl when you get that call coming in and you start to go I did that for so long. Lester's call timed out. I ended up missing it. So then I change my outfit. I touch up my makeup. I'm getting ready to call Lester back. Then I get this Snapchat from him. And when I see the Snapchat and open it up, it is a picture of him and Tiger side by side smiling. And y'all, my heart dropped. I was like, oh my God. I literally, I called my friend crying. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. I 
don't even like Tiger. I'm so sad. And she goes, look, what they're doing right now is childish as fuck. They could have just talked to you about it, but they're playing games and sending you selfies. Don't even say anything back at all. At this point, I was like, okay. Okay, you're right. So all I sent back was a laughing crying emoji. Left it alone for the rest of the night. I had all this homework and I was so distracted. Another reason why I didn't want to tell them both anything in that moment is because they were probably both already talking about me. Did she text you all the time? Hey mate, she barely texted me. We barely sent any messages. She ignored me. Oh, she's always sending me messages. We FaceTime every day. I was watching their activity over Snapchat because normally they don't post on there. And all of a sudden, I noticed that Tiger was posting all these stories. You know when girls break up with their boyfriends and they go out clubbing and then they record their entire night of mischief and hoe activity? Tiger recorded Lester and himself in this like empty kitchen with the Bahama employees that worked there doing body shots, licking their neck, kissing them. You know what he was trying to do? Tiger was already trying to make Lester look bad. I could just tell in that moment. I was like, these two boys are very, very hurt right now. I need to just let them do it. Just let them get it out their system. It's fine. I hurt them both. Surprisingly, the next morning, Lester texts me and he's like, I still want to see you. And I go, okay, yeah, I think we should have a conversation. As soon as I get out of school and as soon as he's back from the Bahamas, we literally meet up. As I'm on my way to Lester's house, I get two calls from Tiger. And in my head I'm like oh my god Becky is Tiger going to be there waiting with Lester to catch my ass like Chris Harrison he's just gonna come out of the corner and be like start questioning me and come out with cameras and embarrass the fuck out of me I was scared but when I get to Lester's he's already sitting in his driveway and I park at the front of it and I'm like this is not a good look for me right now. But Lester's like, it's okay, don't worry about it. I asked him, when was the moment that you both knew? Lester said that he was sending me a Snapchat, like a chat in the actual text. And when he did, my name showed up. And because my name is different, Tiger looks over at Lester's phone, sees my name, and he goes, no. And that's how your girl got caught. That Apparently, that's what they said was the official moment. My fear was that they somehow knew all along and they were playing me, but he insisted that that was not the case. Me and him have a talk. We're drinking wine and stuff. He basically tells me it's okay. Like, we both just met each other. It's not a big deal. But... A few hours go by and my bag suddenly vibrates twice. No big deal, right? Lester darted over like an eagle. Like, he looked at me like, who's that? <laughs> And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's probably my friends making sure you didn't kidnap and kill me after what just happened. When I went to go check my cell phone text messages after I left his house, I saw that they were both from Tiger and they were, what are you doing? Where are you? I basically ghosted Tiger for a whole entire day. I finally decided that I needed to have a conversation with him too. I had already made up my mind at this point that it was gonna be Lester over Tiger and I text Tiger I'm like, look, we need to have a conversation. And he's like, is this a conversation that I'm gonna like? I text him back. I just want it to be candid. I don't want to set up anything. So I call him. I remember this night because I actually had a date with somebody who plays for the Florida Solar Bears. <laughs> and I was trying to make it on time for that and turn in my quiz. But when I called him, he fought with me on the phone for like, 40 minutes and he would not let the call end until his mom dragged him off the phone basically by saying that she made dinner and it was time to go eat. When I call him, the first thing that basically comes out is we shouldn't talk anymore. And he goes, is it because of my friend? And I didn't lie. I was like, yes, yes it is. He wanted to know and I owed it to him, right? So I was like, look, I just feel like me and him had a connection and I liked how our dates went more. And he tells me that, <sighs> he tells me that Lester told him about how we got physical on our date and he wanted to know if it was true or not. I was like, 
because that's exactly what I was afraid of. My bottom line was like, look, I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't really know how to end it with you. I don't want to be enemies, even though this is kind of awkward. And he's really mad at me. He's like, I oh, don't act like you want to be friends and like everything's going to be okay. Don't, what makes you think we're even, like, why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like we're going to see each other after this? Because we won't. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I just don't want to be angry about this right now. After he's done attacking me, then he starts attacking Lester. And he's like, whatever connection you think you all have, you do. He's this type of person. He's going to do this and that. He can't be trusted. He's da 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 da. And I was like, look. If that's the way that he is, let me find that out. And secondly, if that's your friend, why would you talk about your friend like that? He goes, He's not my friend, we're co-workers. We don't even know each other like that, no. I was just, you know, at a complete loss of words. Eventually his mom is like, Tiger, time for dinner. And you can hear it in the background. And he's like, Look, I have to go. But I think you've made a mistake if you feel that way too. Let me know in three to four days, but do not come back if it doesn't work out. And I was like, okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, me and Lester ended up dating each other for three to four months after that. Towards the end of the relationship, Lester was getting weird with me. And when I started to ask him why, he said that Tiger was telling him that I was like, matching with these caddies who worked for this golf club and that I was going on dates with the barbacks for the freaking country clubs and stuff and he you know what he was trying to do but um yeah that is my 22 year old ho story time about how I dated two golfers who ended up being friends that were both British and both played for the PGA. I will tell you this, Lester no longer plays for the PGA in the way that he did. <laughs> what made me feel like telling the story was I got to this like really bad place with him a year after. I just decided that it no longer matters and I have nobody to protect right now and this story now belongs to the public. So if you guys like this, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell so you can see when I drop my next video in one year from now, a joke about how slow I make my videos. My name is Fleeksy. All of my socials are Fleeksy for YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Thanks for listening, guys.